Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Selena from Wholeness Campaign and today I wanna to share with you why you shouldn't be swimming in chlorinated pools this summer and what to do instead. Plus, I'm gonna give you a few pointers if you absolutely have to swim in a chlorinated pool, what to do and how to best keep your body safe in an environment that what I'll tell you right now is going to be quite toxic for your health. So let's jump in. Okay, so I'm gonna start by kind of explaining why it is toxic for our bodies to have this level of chlorine in it. Our bodies actually have an affinity for iodine. So iodine is a mineral that your body needs to function, that every single cell in your body needs to function, and that we are all extremely depleted in as a culture, um, as a society, because we have taken it out of all of our sources for reasons that maybe I can go into in another video. Iodine has been completely taken out of foods that normally did have iodine in it, and ways that we used to use iodine to purify water, we no longer do that. And we've swapped that for chlorine. The problem is if your body is not given iodine, then it will have an affinity for some other halogen. So that could be bromine and that could be um, chlorine, but whatever it is exposed to first, those iodine receptors will actually bind to in order to satisfy that need in a sense, because your body needs something, and if it's not getting what it needs, which truly is the iodine, then it will settle for whatever is most readily available in the environment. Bromine, a lot of the times, comes in through food, and chlorine can come through things like swimming pools or even drinking water. The problem here is that bromine and chlorine are both considered toxic for the body. They have been known causes of autoimmune conditions, various forms of cancer, as well as asthma and other respiratory illnesses. You can actually find research that shows that swimmers who are exposed to extreme amounts of chlorine, just breathing it in in the swimming pool room, are much more prone to get things like exercise-induced asthma and other kind of respiratory illnesses. And that's just breathing it in. There are also studies that show that it's led to allergies. It can lead to a lot of different allergic type reactions on your skin. Um, people thinking that, oh, they might just be allergic to something, but in actuality, your skin is trying to detox from this chemical. And the chemical is actually killing off a healthy microbiome on the skin. And so you might see things like eczema or psoriasis worsen when you are exposed to a chlorinated swimming pool. I also learned something recently about congenital abnormalities that things like cleft lips or babies being born with any kind of physical abnormality can actually be traced back to higher levels of chlorine in their system than is healthy. Things like bladder or rectal cancer have also been traced back to high amounts of chlorine exposure and ultimately just a heavy burden of chlorine on the body. The tricky thing about this is that you often won't see a short-term effect. Now, oftentimes if you have sensitive skin, you will, um, or if you have sensitive lungs, you will. What's crazy about this is that you actually won't necessarily see the short-term effect of chlorine exposure. So you might go into a pool and think, oh, I'm fine because your body handles it once decently. But the problem comes from repeated exposure to chlorine. And really, when those iodine receptors are just only have only taken in that chlorine, that deficiency is what causes these long-term issues um, that you tend to not see in the short term as much, but it's possible over time that you can develop these kinds of diseases or sicknesses based purely on your body being deficient in something that you actually need because it has gotten this kind of counterfeit version of it, chemical counterfeit version of it. Like I've said here, when I talk about lotion or any kind of body product, your skin absorbs what is exposed to. And so what you put on your skin goes directly into your bloodstream. It actually doesn't even filter in the same ways that something that you ingest would filter through, um, say your, your liver or um, your digestive system to be able to purge. Um, what you put on your skin goes directly to your bloodstream and your skin is your largest detox organ. And so what ends up happening is you are killing off the microbiome of your skin while also absorbing that chemical into your body to be taken in by those iodine receptors and, and ultimately making you much more prone to this mineral deficiency that can cause these kinds of long-term things. Having it in your system 
is just another kind of toxin that your body then needs to detox from. So I talk about this all the time here on my channel. There's tons of ways that you can support your body as it detoxes, but part of that is not adding to your toxic load or your toxic burden by swimming in pools that cause your body to absorb all of this chlorine that then you have to detox from later. Now, I know that's not a super fun answer. Um, I know a lot of people have pools and they enjoy swimming in the summer, especially in hot places. Swimming can actually be a really good way to connect with people and even exercise. So what is an alternative? For one, if you're planning a trip and you're planning to just be around a pool all the time, you could think to maybe plan a trip closer to a lake or a beach instead of, say, a pool. So kind of transitioning your ideas around vacation from poolside to beachside. Um, the beach actually will help you to detox so much better. Um, so you'd, you'd be going on a vacation and you can actually support your detox pathways as opposed to hurting them potentially. If you own a swimming pool, you can actually use iodine or some other kind of um, sanitizing agent such as salt. Salt water pools are becoming really popular now to actually sanitize your pool instead of chlorine. Now that might take a little bit more digging. It might not be as easily or readily available. However, every time you get into that pool, you're going to be absorbing chlorine. And so if you want to keep your body safe and if you have a pool, I think it's definitely worth the investment. Now, if you absolutely have to swim in a chlorinated pool, have to, have to, have to, say it's really important for you to get swimming lessons or, you know, your kid is gonna to go to a party, then whatever, then a few things you can do to kind of minimize the impact of that chlorine on your system and decrease the amount that it gets absorbed are the following. So you could actually shower first before getting into the pool. Um, and this can actually cause your skin to basically absorb whatever water that is coming from the shower first so that your pores are not opened straight up into the chlorine. That actually can decrease the amount of chlorine that's absorbed because if your skin has been exposed to water, then it's absor it absorbs what comes first. That's one option. I've also seen people recently coating their skin in coconut oil or some other kind of oil because oil repels water. And so if you are covering your skin in some kind of coconut oil, maybe then wearing a swimming cap on top of that, then you are much less likely to be absorbing as much of that water because your skin is basically repelling it. I've also seen this recently, people who do swimming as a sport, they will actually bring with them to the pool a bottle of basically vitamin C water. So vitamin C neutralizes chlorine. So if you have a bath filter or shower filter, that's often what they're using to filter that part of the contaminants. They'll have these beads of vitamin C. So basically as the water goes through it, it's neutralizing the chlorine as it does so. You can actually just buy, I'll link it in the description box below, but it's a powdered vitamin C, ascorbic acid. It's this ascorbic acid, it's synthetic vitamin C. And this ascorbic acid in water can be sprayed on the skin after you've been in the pool and it can actually neutralize any residual chlorine that's on your skin. So that might be a good option as well if you need to kind of protect yourself if you're in a situation where you need to be in a chlorinated pool. Another thing I really would recommend is that you would talk to your practitioner about iodine supplementation. Even if it is just on your skin, as Dr. Natasha recommends, you will be getting so much benefit from having iodine in your system as opposed to chlorine. And so speak with your practitioner, talk with a holistic practitioner if you don't have one yet, and see if you can start incorporating iodine into your diet. If you wanna start small, you could just start having some seaweed snacks, which has iodine naturally in it. Starting somewhere so that your body is actually getting the minerals it needs, um, and your cells are being satisfied by that iodine as opposed to gravitating for something, anything, and oftentimes chlorine is the most readily available. So that's another way to kind of protect yourself against the toxic effects of chlorine. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. If you got any value out of this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It is my passion to walk alongside people as they heal and grow. It inspires me and hopefully brings encouragement to you. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.